Hello friends. I hope you are doing well. Do you know how people's personal information and data are at risk nowadays as technology becomes more advanced? As a result, it's crucial to know how to protect yourself from hackers and online predators. By making a few simple changes to your devices and accounts, you can maintain security against outside parties' unwanted attempts to access your data, as well as protect your privacy from those you don't consent to sharing your information with. We are here again with five important tips that make you more secure online. So without delaying let's start with first tip. Use different email addresses for different kinds of accounts. When you use the same email address for everything online, it becomes impossible to identify where spam emails originate from and how the spammers got hold of your information in the first place. Your email address may have been sold by a deceitful service or it could have been involved in a data breach for one of the websites you signed up to. People who are both highly organized and methodical about their security often use different email addresses for different purposes to keep the online identities associated with them separate. If a phishing email claiming to be from your bank comes to the account you use only for social media, you know, it's fake. Second tip is, protect your web browsing and delete the cache. Companies and websites track everything you do online. Every ad, social network button and website collects information about your location, browsing habits, and more. The data collected reveals more about you than you might expect. You might think yourself clever for never tweeting your medical problems or sharing all your religious beliefs on Facebook for instance, but chances are good that the websites you visit regularly provide all the data. Advertisers need to pinpoint the type of person you are. Never underestimate how much your browser's cache knows about you. Saved cookies, saved searches, and web history could point to home address, family information, and other personal data. Be sure to delete browser cookies and clear your browser history on a regular basis. It's easy in Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Internet Explorer, or Opera. Simply press Ctrl, Shift and Delete to bring up a dialog that lets you choose which elements of browser data you want to clear. Let's see the third tip. Turn off Save Password feature in browsers. Don't allow your browser to save your passwords. None of them. If you do, those passwords are vulnerable. All someone has to do is having access to your computer remotely or physically to steal your data. In place of having your web browser store your passwords, make use of a password manager. By doing so, the likelihood of someone viewing your passwords is considerably lower. It's not perfect, but it's far better than handing over the security of your passwords to a web browser. Tip number four. Get HTTPS or VPN and use it. You should install HTTPS Everywhere extension. HTTPS Everywhere automatically directs you to the secure version of a site when the site supports that, making it difficult for an attacker. Especially if you're on public Wi-Fi at a coffee shop, airport, or hotel to digitally eavesdrop on what you're doing. Some people may want to use a virtual private network VPN, but it's not necessary for everyone. If you frequently connect to public Wi-Fi, a VPN is useful because it adds a layer of security to your browsing when HTTPS isn't available. It can also provide some privacy from your internet service provider and help minimize tracking based on your IP address. But all your internet activity still flows through the VPN provider's servers, so if using a VPN, you're choosing to trust that company over your ISP not to store or sell your data. Make sure you understand the pros and cons first. Let's move to tip number five. Use two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication can be a pain, but it absolutely makes your accounts more secure. Two-factor authentication means you need to pass another layer of authentication, not just a username and password to get into your accounts. 
If the data or personal information in an account is sensitive or valuable, and the account offers two-factor authentication, you should enable it. Gmail, Evernote, and Dropbox are a few examples of online services that offer two-factor authentication. How two-factor authentication typically works. When you log into an account on a new laptop or smartphone, you'll be asked for your password, but once you enter it, you won't immediately get access to your account. Instead, the website will ask for a one-time code sent by text to your phone. The second factor is your phone. Without it and the password, your access will be denied. This is all we have for you in this video. Hope you will apply this tips when you access your mobile or PC. If you have any questions regarding internet security, ask it in the comments section below. To get more top tips videos like this, hit the like and subscribe button and let us know what you'd like to see next. Please also click the bell icon to be notified when a new video is published. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you in the next video.